Hey everyone, this is Dan, the Six Figure Couch Surfer. Um, looks like I have a light right above my head. Um, I wanted to make this quick video for parents who are joining the military. I'm getting some messages, several uh, from either single parents or married couples who have kids and you're asking about how people manage or if I know anyone who entered the military in that same circumstance. And I, I did see several parents, um, whether they were single moms or single dads or you know a, a married mother or father, um, I was able to see how they interacted with their kids, interacted with their spouses back home. So I'll, I'll give you a little insight about that. Essentially what I saw mostly was um, one parent would be back home with the kid and they would have some sort of social network to rely on. So whether they moved in with their in-laws entirely and just paid a second mortgage on that house, <clears throat> kept it empty, and then you know were able to rely on the in-laws. Sometimes they simply had nannies or daycare, depending on the age of the child. A lot of them were around the ages between two to six years old. Um, some of them had teenagers as kids, uh, if they were on the older side of the spectrum, or if not teenagers, really, you know, above maybe between 10 and 15 years old. That one is a little bit more rare, but they essentially, what it boiled down to was they had people that they, that their spouse back home could rely on for support. Um, and if, if that spouse didn't, I mean, at least they had daycare or something to that extent. So it was very much doable. They were able to FaceTime with their children, not in basic training, cause you won't have your phone on you, but later on in other pipelines like OCS and AIT, you'll have your phone so you can make nightly calls. Um, that was, or at least you, you might be able to. It really kind of depends on that company and, and how they run things. But from what I've seen, they were able to make phone calls and interact with their, with their spouses and whatnot. So yes, it's difficult to be away from your children, away from your family. Um, I personally, I mean, I found that courageous of them because they didn't, especially like in basic training and whatnot, you don't know what's happening with your family. If there's ever an emergency, you'll be contacted for sure. But I mean, nobody wants to think about that, but um, on the day in and day out, you could just write letters to your family. So you have to have some patience with yourself, with the training pipeline and <clears throat> have trust in whoever is around your family back home. It, it definitely can be stressful. Just the other day, I had a friend whose alarm system went off at home where his wife and kids are. They weren't home at the time, but he was notified by the police through his phone that the police were on the way to the house. Ended up being a false alarm, but still, I mean, his for about an hour there in the morning, he was just pulling his hair out, trying to figure out if his family was in danger. So. There are things like that that occur. I mean, any job really, even outside the military where you travel, I imagine it's the same thing. If you're, you know, a traveling sales rep and you're in a whole different region in the US or around the world, then same thing. You might be traveling for weeks, maybe even months at a time. So I would say have people back home that you trust, uh, that you can send your spouse to or have them, you know, make sure that they can be around and, and love on them and help them out. Um, I have. A nephew and niece and I I can see how much of a handful it is even for two parents you know so um, I'm a big fan I'm, I'm a big psych guy I, I want to get my master's in clinical psychology and one of the biggest things I read about is how back in the day um, in those good old days grandparents would help raise children cousins extended family and uh, it, it essentially takes a village you know um, so if you are a single parent, uh, if you don't have much support around you as a couple with children, then definitely look for look for folks who can help you. You know, it's it's going to be a huge burden to do it on your own. And I think we live in one of the most isolating times in our society, it's just as as people due to technology and all of that. So um, while technology will help, you can FaceTime your children, you can call your spouse when it's available to you, depending on where you are in your training pipeline, there's nothing that beats the peace of mind knowing that around your loved ones are others that you trust to just come over and help if anything happens. You know, if there's a plumbing issue, if there's 
you know, a child gets sick um, or injured or, or things like that, uh, it's, it's always nice to know you have people you can call or that they can call. And so you know your, your family will be safe. So I hope that helps. Um, be encouraged that it is doable. I, I don't make, want to make this like a doom and gloom, gloom video because obviously there are many, many, many parents who join the military. So you're not alone. You're not irresponsible for that. It's not, um, I know a lot of you have mentioned the specific age of your child. Like I think my, my child, because they're at this age, it, it shouldn't be devastating to them if I join the military. And I don't think in any case it would be that devastating uh, if you have, if, as long as they have the support they have um, and they have a parent back home or a caregiver who loves them and can just keep on encouraging, encouraging them even while you're away. Um, but feel free to ask me more questions. I'm sorry if I didn't hit on all the specifics, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to help and give you as much information as I can. So thanks for viewing. Talk to you guys later. Bye.